The wrestling world moves very, very fast. One minute, you're at the top, a main eventer. The next, you're a jobber, or you're fired, or in some cases, you're banned and blacklisted from wrestling entirely. Today, we're going to be discussing wrestlers who killed their own careers and will most likely never return to wrestling at a high level due to their own actions. Before we get into it, though, make sure to like and subscribe. I'll give you until the three count. Rachel Rose, hooks the leg. There it is. Hope you beat the count and let's get into the video. In 2007, Kevin Kiley signed a developmental contract with the WWE and would report to their developmental territory, Florida Championship Wrestling, or FCW. He originally started using the ring name of Kevin Kiley, his real name, but in September 2008, he would change his ring name to Carson Oakley. He started teaming with Scotty Goldman, aka Colt Cabana, who challenged the Hart Dynasty for the Florida Tag Team Championships in November unsuccessfully. And then in early December, he would go through another rebrand and another name change, now calling himself Alex Riley, and playing the gimmick of a college football jock. And while in FCW, Alex Riley would win the FCW Florida Heavyweight Championship, defeating Justin Gabriel and Wade Barrett in a triple threat match on March 18th, 2010. He would hold the title until the July 22nd FCW tapings when he lost the title to Mason Ryan in a triple threat match, also involving Johnny Curtis. Those are some names in a half. On the June 8th episode of NXT and the premiere of Season 2, of NXT back when it was a weird game show, Alex Riley would make his debut being proed by The Miz. Alex Riley did pretty well for himself on the NXT game show. He ended up being the top heel rookie and would come third on the show behind Michael McGillicutty and Caval. But despite not winning, he would join the main roster anyway, becoming the Miz's lackey and the Miz's partner. And Riley actually ended up becoming a pretty big part of WWE television, mainly thanks to the fact that he was there during the time that the Miz cashed in his Money in the Bank briefcase to win the WWE title, and he was there during the Miz's championship reign. Heck, he even walked out with him during the main event of WrestleMania 27. Alex Riley was involved in the main event of WrestleMania. On the May 23rd episode of Raw, though, The Miz and Alex Riley's alliance came to an end. This was following The Miz losing the WWE Championship and blaming it on Alex Riley, causing Riley to attack him and turn face in the process. The feud would blow off at Capital Punishment 2011, remember that show, with Riley defeating The Miz clean. So yeah, Alex Riley had just defeated the guy that was just WWE Champion clean. And from here, he was a top babyface on the Raw brand. Well, maybe not a top babyface, but he was wrestling in the upper mid card, mixing it up with some big names, and was pretty over with the fans, to be fair to him. However, Alex Riley's push would come to an abrupt end, and apparently, it had something to do with a backstage incident and some backstage troubles between himself and none other than John Cena. Arn Anderson, who was an agent in the WWE at the time, recalls the incident saying the following. He seemed to gel well when they put him with The Miz in 2010, but there's a famous story that he was offered some help from John Cena and seemed less than infused or interested, which would have immediately made it way back to the locker room and to the office. And I'm sure it was around the time that his water got cut off. In October 2011, Alex Riley suffered a hip injury that left him inactive for a few weeks, and when he came back, he was relegated to the likes of superstars and back to jobber status, really. He went on a streak of losing matches in 2012, and after being used as a jobber for pretty much that entire year, he transitioned to a role of being a color commentator instead of a wrestler. He would do this a couple of years while making occasional in-ring appearances at live events, but he was not wrestling on TV, until 2015, when Alex Riley would make his return as an in-ring competitor. It was a storyline that saw him being harassed on commentary by NXT champion Kevin Owens, and he would return to wrestling and would get some wins over the likes of CJ Parker and some other jobbers on the NXT roster, until Kevin Owens and him had matches, and Kevin Owens flatlined him and squashed him. And despite the fact he was losing to Kevin Owens, he was still in a good position here. He was doing well for himself back in NXT, but then on May 1st, 2015, it was announced that Alex Riley would be undergoing surgery to fix the degenerative arthritis in his knee. He made his return to NXT eight months later in a winning effort against Bull Dempsey and turning heel in the process, but then after this he was straight back to losing and being a jobber again, and then he was released from the company on May 6th, 2016. After his release, Riley went inactive in wrestling. He actually got an acting role in the show Glow, but he has made his return to wrestling and is now working for the NWA, going under the name of the rare breed Kevin Kiley. 
Oh, and of course, who can forget Push Rage? My god, what an incredible moment that was. Kevin Patrick with Shoals made his wrestling debut in 1982, and he mainly wrestled in the Tennessee, Montreal, and Pacific Northwest territories. And throughout the 80s and early 90s, he wrestled for the likes of World Class Championship Wrestling, Mid-South Wrestling, New Japan Pro Wrestling, the American Wrestling Association, and Frontier Martial Arts Wrestling. He would make his first appearance for the WWF in 1989, when he received a tryout match on June 6th, 1989. He would have another match for the WWF in later, but WWF decided to pass on him and not sign him for the company at this time. He would receive a second tryout match for the WWF on May 6th, 1991, following the closing of the American Wrestling Association. And while he wasn't signed immediately, he would officially join the company in early 1992, returning to the WWF under the name of Nails with a Z at the end to be all to be all cool and hip in the 90s, you know. And throughout his time as Nails in the WWF, he was mainly just used as a lower card guy. He was playing the role of an ex-convict who, in his promos, would allege that he was abused by Big Boss Man, who was a former prison guard during his incarceration. And while he was only used as a jobber in the WWF, Nails still had some programs with Sergeant Slaughter, Big Boss Man, The Undertaker, The Ultimate Warrior, and he even had a few matches against the WWF champion at the time, Bret Hart. However, in December of 1992, he was released from his WWF contract after an incident in which he attacked Vince McMahon in his office. Bret Hart recalls the incident in his autobiography, and apparently the entire thing came from a financial dispute. Supposedly, Nails cornered Vince in his office and screamed at him for 15 minutes, and says that while he was just down the hall from the office, he heard a loud crash, which was the sound of Nails knocking Vince over his chair and choking him out. This led to a series of lawsuits between Nails and the WWF, with Nails alleging that he had been supplied steroids by Vince McMahon, and he also filed a wrongful termination lawsuit claiming McMahon had sexually assaulted him. The WWF would file a counterclaim against Nails, but both suits were later dropped. And seemingly, he just disappeared from the wrestling industry following his firing from the WWE. The only record of any match I can find from Nails is on Cage Match from the 25th of August 2001, an independent wrestling show where he was defeated by Matt Burns. This was seemingly his last ever wrestling match. Ivelisse Velez began training to be a wrestler at age 15 in Puerto Rico, debuting in the World Wrestling Council in the year of 2004. In March of 2011, Ivelisse Velez was announced as one of the 14 contestants for the fifth season of WWE Tough Enough. She came seventh in the show after she was forced to withdraw from injury. Up until that point, Ivelisse had not been included in the bottom three for any of the episodes and had been doing pretty well in the series. But despite not winning, Ivelisse was signed by the WWE in November 11th, 2011 and assigned to FCW, where she would debut under the name of Sofia Cortez. And when FCW rebranded to NXT, she was there as well. She made her NXT TV debut on the July 4th episode of NXT on 2012, defeating Paige of all people on her debut. She even wrestled main roster member Natalia on the July 25th episode of NXT. But then in August of 2012, she announced that she'd been released from her contract. She claimed she was released because she was one of the first people to talk about Bill DeMott's misconduct and reported it to the office. And following her release, Eva Lee would become a stalwart and a workhorse of the independent scene, wrestling for numerous companies throughout America and the world. She wrestled for TNA, AAA, Shine, various independent wrestling promotions, and of course, in 2014, she debuted for Lucha Underground. And Eva Lee's had a very successful career in Lucha Underground. She was a two-time trios champion after teaming up with Angelico and Son of Havoc, and had overall a really great career in the company. However, something that had irked Eva Lee's her entire career was her backstage attitude. And it's something that really halted her career and hurt her prospects, and that especially came into play in All Elite Wrestling. Ivelisse debuted for AEW in 2019 and was eventually signed to a contract for the company. She actually had a bit of early success as she was part of the Women's Tag Team Cup in 2020, where her and Diamante were the winners of the tournament. Herself and Diamante defeated the Nightmare Sisters on the August 22, 2020 episode of AEW Dynamite. On the September 
September 11th, 2020 episode of AEW Dynamite, Ivelisse would challenge Thunder Rosa for the NWA Women's World Championship. And this is the match where everything went to pot. In this match, you can see Ivelisse visibly annoyed with Thunder Rosa and no selling her offense. Following this, there was obviously a load of backstage drama between Thunder Rosa and Ivelisse, and Ivelisse was essentially relegated to dark. In fact, she only wrestled once more on Dynamite following this. That was until she was released from AEW in April of 2021. Ivelisse blames Thunder Rosa for dragging her name through the mud backstage and backstage politics as the reason why she was released from AEW. And she also claims that the no-selling and the shoot fight that they had in their match was Thunder Rosa's fault after she forgot what spots were going to happen and that led to the fight. She stated the following on an interview with Chris Van Vliet. When the day came, she didn't want to do anything. I'm like, what? No, this match will be awesome, but I'm also trying to knock it out the park. Even at the start with the slap, we went over that one million times. We knew. She forget what comes after. I had no choice but to nudge her face. That's when the shoot stuff happened. I trained MMA. You can't pull that on me. I just didn't want to allow that negativity. I didn't want to be pulled into that. She tried and tried though. Also, I was already signed. Why would I do that? Somehow, I was made into the bad guy though. There is nothing that can be done about that. But the bigger issue is not understanding what kind of an asset I could be. Since her release from AEW, Ivelisse wrestles far less than what she used to wrestle on the independent scene, transferring her time between Mexico and the US, wrestling for various promotions between the two, but once again, is nowhere near as active as she used to be. 